Hey, gun people. Uh, man, I've been using so many different... Oh, shit, I still got two other types of oil. Damn, I already started this. I'm out of nails. Uh, let me... I don't think I need to use this. But I wanted to do all the different types of oils. And I still got other oils that I didn't want to grab. But I just don't use them as much. So these are some of the oils that I have. Go Juice, Rim Oil, Corrosion X, Lucas, uh, Ballistol, CV2. That's my new go-to grease. 3-in-1 uh, Oil. I'm probably going to take uh, Amsoil off. Not too many people use that. WD-40 is behind the break free. Uh, I was going to do WD-40. You should never use WD-40 on your guns. If you ever open a gun and you see that dried like coffee stain on the inside of your gun, somebody has used WD-40. And over time it builds up and it cakes and it dries and it's very hard to get off and it's not good for your guns. Don't use WD-40 on your guns. Um, and that's just my opinion. You can use whatever the hell you want. I don't care if you pee on your guns. Uh, and then I've got, uh, this is that Stapleex Red. I'll probably get rid of that and uh, because I think the Safari Land or Safari Charlie is a little bit more popular. Super Lube. Strike Hold, I don't use it as an oil, but I use Strike Hold as a very great rust remover. If there's any type of slight rust at all, if I get a used gun, whether I see rust or not, I put some strike hold on a cotton rag and I rub it with my finger in one spot and it looks like I'm taking off the bluing. I mean it literally gets any rust off. So I really like strike hold to remove rust or to bring a bluing out on a gun that's been tarnished or sitting around a little bit. That strike hold will really, you'll be able to tell your rag is going to turn just rusty brown. And uh, so I like strike hold but I don't use it as a lubricant. And I'm sure you can, but I just use it as a more rust promoter. Then I have Super Lube. And this stuff that uh, one of my viewers sent me from the EU. It's supposed to be really expensive and really, really well. So I'm going to, you see I cut that little wood there and I got little holes in it. So I'm going to mark, I bought 12 nails that rust. It's hard to find nails that rust. All of them are coated and they don't rust anymore. So, what I did was, uh, I got these nails that, and they, I guess they call them framing nails or something. They got the, like the two little heads on it. But I noticed in the box that some of them were rusted. And I was like, these things are already starting to rust. He goes, yeah, they don't really finish those because they're made to just be hammer in for concrete or whatever. And then they're pulled out. So they don't coat them. And that's what I wanted. I wanted a non-coated nail. And I've looked at all these nails. They're pretty much the same. None of them have any rust on them. Um... So I'm going to try to make it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this oil, changing the gloves, each one. This is going to be very scientific, very scientific, very smart, way above most liberals. Uh, I'm going to change the glove every time, and I'm going to put it on the top of the nail and not the bottom. And then I'm going to stick the bottom of the nail in the hole, and I'm going to place that out in my barn outside to where it gets to the elements, the cold, the moisture, everything. And then we'll pull them out a week and look at them, and then I'll put them back out there, and we'll go two or three weeks. And I just want to see kind of which one performs the best. Now, some guy did like five oils a long time ago, and out of the, all the ones he did, this one protected the most. It was kind of amazing. I was kind of shocked because three-in-one oil is just, I mean, it's been around forever, and it was the best. I'm hoping, because I really like this CV2, I'm hoping this gives me great, corrosion protection but we'll see so uh, I just wanted to do this and put this out there the more videos I'll, I'll, as soon as I put the other one after a week after I get them done and everything I'm not gonna make a video of me putting on the gloves uh, we talked about gloves also um, what I found was uh, everybody says black nitrate you got it. well most gloves are nitrate whether it's black or blue doesn't matter uh, you know let's not get on the color thing here uh, I don't care. My gloves are, are, are blue, pink. I don't really care if they're effective. The gloves I were using was what's called a 4 mil. These are a 6 mil, and they work pretty good. But these are 6 mil textured. So uh, they give me a little bit more picking up ability when I want to um, 
grab a small pin or something if I drop it working with a gun because it has those little grooves on it it's pretty cool and these six mil textured I think these were 10 bucks maybe 11 bucks on Amazon and um, now Buck had some and and these are a hundred gloves so that's 50 sets I went to Harbor Freight like everybody told me to go and they want 10 bucks for 50 gloves which is only 25 sets so I'm not getting my gloves at Harbor Freight I'm sorry they got a much better deal online uh, so these are the gloves I got uh, blue nitrate uh, glue works I don't even know what the hell that name was but anyway they're textured and they are six mil uh, now Buck had some black nitrate powderless they're all powderless they're all nitrate now and his were 8 mil, which is the same size they use for uh, uh, tattooing. And they work fine too, and I liked them. But they're like 13 or 14 bucks because they're, they're two more mils thick. And I think a mil, when I looked it up, was like one one thousandths. So four mils is four one thousandths. But anyway, and I think you measure it not single but double. So, um, so when this says six mils, I think if you measure one, this will be three, but when you measure it together like so, it's six. And uh, those gloves seem to work pretty good. They don't tear. Now, if you want them really tight, I got pretty large hands, so I usually wear an extra large, but I got large because I didn't want them loose. These seem to fit pretty good. Uh, let me go ahead and slide one of these on. I've already had this on and took it off, seeing if I could get it off and on. And it came off pretty easy. So this is an extra large. It doesn't fit quite as tight everywhere, but on my fingers, it's tight enough. So I'm okay with um, the extra large. Now I got to set a large first because I usually like them kind of tight, and I don't want them loose. And they're pretty tight, but I can get them on and off. But I think extra large, they're pretty much sized the way they should be. My gloves are extra large. These are extra large, and they fit pretty good. And I can take it off and put it back on. So, um, and a lot of gloves you can't do that if they're too tight. So, these are gloves. I don't have a link. I'm not getting money. I don't care. I'm just, I'm just sharing, guys. Just trying to help out a brother. You know? Hook me up. Shit. Don't forget to like my video. Oh, please like and subscribe. I don't care if you subscribe. Just like the damn video. I did notice when I told you guys to like that one time. Shit, like for the next two days. I got all these people saying, dude, your videos are showing up everywhere. I've been getting a lot of videos. So I think YouTube recommends videos on the number of likes it gets or if it gets a lot of activity. So if, if I want to know why all these other guys who have million subscribers, why they always say, please like and subscribe. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, please scratch my balls when you like it. If I said all that every time, I think my subs would grow. But I don't like bugging and harassing you guys, and I think I got a pretty smart audience. So you dummies that can't remember to freaking like, hit the freaking like button, you big pussy. All right, well, in that there, I'll do the next one uh, and see how it goes after a week, after I lube them up. Hi, young people, I want to add this in. Uh, <laughs> I love these boots. They were waterproof. I usually don't like steel toes because I don't want a horse stepping on them. It'll bend a steel toe if they step right on them. Um, so normally, I don't recommend steel toe boots around horses. But these were good waterproof boots made by Ariat. And uh, man, let me tell you, they lasted me, I want to say, a good two or three years. And now the sole is finally kind of coming apart right there. So I ordered the exact same set. So this is what they look like when I got them. And that's what they look like after two or three years. So I think they held up pretty stinking good. But, uh, you know, they're looking a little rough and they leak now. So I wanted to add that in on uh, my boots. Maybe I should auction off my old old boots for some charity or something. Somebody wants to put them in some freaking horse pasture so their horses can chew on them. <laughs> anyway. Okay, here is the final cut. I'm not going to show you guys. I marked them on the front. So we have uh, Go Juice, Rim Oil, Corrosion X, Lucas Gun Oil, Ballistol, CV2, three and one is right up top there for that nail and it goes down and those are the test subjects so I hammered them in 
They're not going to fall out. There's no, um, there's no lube on the bottom. I just got halfway up and kind of wiped them down. They all had oil, and then I wiped it off with a paper towel, with a clean paper towel each on each one. So uh, I didn't like lube and drip on some and put less on the other. Somebody thought, think I'm trying to push some product. I, I want to know which one works better. I ain't got no reason to set this up on who does better. All right, we'll see how it goes. I'll post this one, and then uh, I'll give it a week, and then we'll tell you what's happening unless I see something really change in a few days. All right, we'll end it there.